Kamal. Poi a Kamal chiederemo di utilizzare questo per fare un pranzetto. Che cosa ci hai portato? What did you bring? Bread that Paola baked yesterday. Great. <laughs> Italian baked bread. Yes. Mmm, that smells so nice. Come on, I'll tease you up then. Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think food is a good way to bring a community as diverse as the Lebanese one together? And in particular, sharing bread, which is done across many religions, as we know. Well, I didn't bring bread as of uh, foods that can bring communities. I brought bread because we were asked to bring a memory of war or getting together. And if there was something that we had to run for whenever the war started or the conflict or the problem started, it was just for bread, and I don't know why. And like people didn't care about getting nothing, but ju they just needed to stock on bread. And I wanted this to be the symbol that I brought with me. A few years ago, we did a wonderful project in the farmer's market that I founded in Beirut with a wonderful person called Maria Vogelzang, who's uh, a food designer. And it was about building on the memories of people, war memories. So we did like a workshop and we decided what was really the most important war memory of people and for, of, for all of them it was bread. So what we did is like building bread bowls, like in the shape of bowl, and we painted it in green with parsley juice. Uh, and it was, we, we exhibited them in the market with some like white typical cheese, which is like ricotta. And people were like breaking this bread and eating it. And it was like if we were all like digesting the war memories. So it's a very important element. And you know, bread is the start of civilization. Civilization started when people stopped one place to wait for the grain to grow and to give fruits, to give uh, to, to the plant to grow and to give grains. And this is when they, they stopped somewhere. They asked architects to start building houses for them. And this is how ur uh, uh, urban plans started and cities started. What I do in Lebanon is since 10 years is a project called Souk al Tayyib. Tayyib means good, good as uh, a taste, but must more than taste as of, you know, good as ethics and good as a life. The idea was how can we bring all of these different people that were fighting because of their differences. Lebanon is such a small country, you know, but you, hear, you heard so much about it maybe because more of the conflict and the wars of this country. So how can we look for similarities beyond differences? What can bring all these different people together rather than having them all fight together? So it was the land, the product of the land, and the cuisine that we can make out of it. What can bring all these different people who are Muslim or Christian, people looking to the east or people looking to the west, what can bring them all together rather than the land itself? When we look at it in this way, food is the most authentic and sincere expression of roots and of tradition. It's not at all about an Epicurean project, about wonderful tasting bread or wonderful tasting cuisine, but it was just about a wonderful expression of who we are, where do we come from, and what do we stand for. Today, Sukkot Taib is gathering more than 100 farmers and producers and cooperatives. It's more than 700 people from all over the country. And if these people didn't find a common ground for such a long time, maybe they are trying to find a common ground around a common project and a common dream that can bring them all together around uh, a, a same project. We started in 2004 with uh, producers only farmers market and the idea was how this man or this woman can come to the city where there's a demand and the purchasing power so for their own product. And then we developed many educational projects in, and schools and universities. And then it was like, what about the rural areas? You know, we always think about development in cities only. And we always forget that the more we develop cities, the more these cities need to be fed need to eat and need to drink, and development should be equal at the same time in cities and in rural areas. 
I think Italy is an exceptional example in the world of decentralization. I don't know what is the capital of Italy. Is it Rome or is it Milan or is it Bologna or, you know, like it's, it's a country that is so decentralized. There is, every, there is something to do everywhere in this country. There's always something to eat, something to drink, something to study, a museum to visit, you know, a, a university or a school to study in. So it's really a wonderful example of decentralization and how, you know, every place, it's not one who is better than the other, it's like just celebrating the best of each and every place. The latest project that we developed through the farmer's market was about wonderful ladies who are perpetuating the traditions not only as of agriculture, but mainly as cuisine. You know, it's something for the men to be in the fields, to be in the social, to be outside, you know, in the public life traditionally, or to be in the fields and to, uh, to plant to, uh, and to take care of agriculture. But women are always, you know, like the life giver, like the earth itself, who give life and feed their families and their children at the same time. So men were in the fields doing this production and women were in the kitchen uh, cooking. So, in, as of 2009, we devised, we created a kitchen in, in downtown Beirut, in the center of Beirut, where every day it's a different woman from a different village who would come and cook the typical cuisine of her own uh, village or her own region, sharing and being proud and having an important economic return through what she does. She used to think that she was, you know, like a common, as we were talking, like a common housewife. Yes, she is a common housewife, but the fact of being a common housewife is an extraordinary act. You know, there's not ordinary and extraordinary. Each act, what we do, can be extraordinary at the same time. In Islam, they say each act is an act of adoration. So whatever we're doing, it's not about going to the mosque on a Friday or to the church on Sunday. It's through each and every act that we're doing. How can we do it in the best way possible? And how can it be the best contribution to life and to our country? Thank you very much. You. And by the way, the smell of this bread made with love kind of <laughs> <laughs> make me feel at peace. Thank you.